Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from j and Aerospace. This is the build video for the newest version of the Zapper, the 2022 Zapper for Science Olympiad Electric Right Stuff. This is our balsa, mostly balsa except for the carbon tail boom, um, but our, our wooden self-jigging option for the uh, Division B competition for electric right stuff. So all the ribs, tail, etc. are self-jigging uh, and interlock. It includes power system uh, for the electric right stuff uh, event that is legal uh, both in voltage, capacity, etc. and very efficient power system. So it's a fairly easy airplane to fly, very easy to build. And now we're going to show you how to build it. Alright, so for your electric airplane, you're going to need to have uh, some various tools to, to make it uh, and materials to be successful in building this airplane. So you're going to need to have some parchment paper handy. This is going to provide you a surface to lay down and build on. It's a non-stick surface. I recommend having an electronic digital scale. We do sell digital scales on the website. Um, this is mine. I have actually modified this scale by gluing a little mast here so I can put a platform up on top of it. And that just allows me to, um, to weigh things on that platform. I also have another fitting because this is actually a piece of metal tubing. So I can put this in here and then in this case I can take uh, for example, a glider or whatever airplane, and I can stick it in here and it'll hold it so it won't rock around. Next, you are going to want to have a pair of wire dikes of some sort. may want a pair of needle nose pliers. You're going to have, want to have some super glue of some type and a matching accelerator. Uh, this is Gor Gorilla brand glue. Um, we do still carry this on our website. We also carry the Bob Smith, which we're switching over to. Um, and this is Bob Smith uh, CA accelerator. You will want to have this uh, spray adhesive. This is 3M Super 77. We also have this on our website. You'll want to have uh, Vaseline or petro petroleum jelly, something of that nature. You're going to use this to stick your covering, covering material to your covering frame so that you can reposition it on there to get the covering tensioned well. You want to have a ruler of some sort preferably metric. Um, English will work, but you may need to do some conversions. Uh, and the reason for that is since the rules for Sioli events are all written in metric, having a metric ruler is a good idea. Um, have a Sharpie to cover the, um, the little panel in your wing. I recommend having a cautery, uh, particularly if you're using uh, building the Electron. Uh, this is very useful for cutting the plastic covering rather than using a razor blade. Um, for the zapper, this, um, this is actually not quite as easy to use, but it still works very well. You will want to have a single edge razor blade handy for cutting. And I recommend having some uh, packing tape. Uh, a couple other things you'll need, depending on which power system, and check which power system you've got, you may need AA or AAA batteries. So if you've got this power system, these take AAA batteries. If you have the, the black power system, you're going to need uh, the AA's. And so that covers the uh, tools that you'll need for electric. Alright, so let's look at what the contents of your zapper kit and we'll go through the uh, inventory of parts. So there's a couple important things that we'll need to cover in this. 
Um, bear in mind uh, the parts for this airplane, there are some very fragile parts and once you've opened the kit you're responsible for those. So if there is actually a defective part you fire up and it's not working, um, we can cover that. But the, the fact is that these power systems are very fragile so if you break a wire off um, you have to buy a new one. We cannot cover in, anything of that nature. These are fragile. So the power system currently included is this one. This includes this charging box uh, that you insert your batteries in. And this one requires uh, two AA batteries. These. And then in here, and again these are fragile. The wires on these motors are very fragile. Uh, there are two power systems going to be included and then you'll have four of these propellers. Now, this is a point where we're going to cover the fact there may be, uh, after, after about October of 2021 or so, we're hoping to have a different style of power system. So this power system has a little controller, right, uh, charging jack up here that you access with your fingernail, and it has a push button charger over here, and you can see it lights up. This runs on two AA batteries. There is going to be an extra port in here that's going to have a wire running through it because these were originally designed for three batteries. There's a, going to be a terminal shorted out. Do not put a battery in that bay or you will burn up that battery, uh, which is a kind of unsafe condition to say the least, and it may make your charger stop working. If you plug a battery into that bay, we do not cover the failure of the component. The power system looks like this. And again, this is the type we will be switching over to. So current production is this system over here. But you will be switching over. The kits will eventually include this unit instead. This is also fragile. These wires are very thin and they tear out of the motor very easily. They break off very easily. As long as you handle with care you will not have problems but any mishandling will break these wires off. And again we cannot replace these. You have to buy new ones if you break them. There is a charge port right here and I will demonstrate how this unit works. And again this is fragile. When it's not glued to an airplane it's even more fragile. So when I plug this in, nothing is going to happen. I am going to press this button, and eventually that light is going to come on. You have to wait a minute. Hold down the button. In practice, you will time how long you're holding this button down. And then when you release that button, the light goes off and you're no longer charging. Now notice the motor has not turned on. As soon as I disconnect this unit, the motor comes on and you can hear that it's running. So if I were to plug it back in, it shuts back off, release, comes back on. And don't stick your finger in the propeller, it does turn very quickly, so just be aware of that. So the rest of the parts in your kit, uh, important in your instruction sheet is a three view drawing showing general arrangement of the airplane. So it gives you something you can physically look at to show how to put how the airplane's basic assembly is. You're going to have some clay, ballast weight, may or may not be this color. You're going to have this veggie bag, it's actually a, I think a garbage bag, it's very thin plastic. You will have these thick balsa sticks, so you have two that are 18 inches long and two that are shorter. These are your covering frame. They're not part of the airplane itself, but you will need them. Then you will have two fuselages. You will have two carbon fiber tail booms. And then you will have two sets of wing mounts. 
there's going to be a piece of 020 piano wire. You will have these wing spars and your ribs for your wing, stab ribs, stab spars across here. And then you'll have a set of wing tips. Alright, so to get started, let's pop open a single edge razor blade and we are going to remove one set of wing spars. And do not cut out all the parts, only cut out what you need at the time. And sometimes you'll have a piece like this one. There's a couple spots that didn't cut all the way through. And don't just rip it out of there. Go back and just carefully cut through those spots. Now the next thing you're going to do is pop out a set of ribs. You have two complete sets of ribs. We're going to drop out just one of them. Now it's important to notice. Um, we'll go ahead and we can go ahead and pop the two spars apart, and we'll want them facing the little notch parts towards each other. In this stack of ribs, the rib at the bottom is shorter than all the others. Let's go ahead and take that rib now, and we're going to glue it in place. First, I'm going to test fit and it is fitting in the slots. Sometimes this wood will end up a little bit thick so you'll have to pinch it at the ends. Don't force it in the slot. Pinch it if you need to um, because balsa wood does compress and then it'll slide right in there. I'm gluing on the end all the way around and just use a little bit of glue just dab some on each side and the end the top and bottom no glue does not benefit you because it won't be touching anything on the uh, spars and now we're going to slide this part together now it's important to try to keep these squared up and if it becomes an issue you could actually bring something in here as a gauge that, yes, that's square and not, say, skewed off to the side like that, because now you're ha gonna have a crooked wing. So if you slide back together, you can check over here as well. And with that, oops, sorry, that's in front of the camera. Um, with that all stuck together, Dab some glue up, or some, yeah, some accelerator. Now, at this point, I like to go ahead and start framing in the exterior of the wing. So, I'm going to glue in the end ribs. So, glue on a side and an end, side and an end, and turn it around so the glue that's on the side is facing into those little notches. If you have a little burr that's sticking up, you can break it off or sand it off or what have you. We do the same thing on the other side. And this one has a little bit of a burr as well. I should have taken that off before I put glue on there.
and you'll notice you have one extra rib. And that is in case you break one, because there's a good chance you might. Now it is important that you slide the ribs all the way into the slots, because if you don't, the spars will be farther apart, and your wing will become illegal because its cord, which is this distance, will be too large. Now, when you are squeezing something, don't squeeze like this or you'll break the rib. Or what a lot of people like to do like that. You're going to want to put a thumb right here and grab up as close together as possible. Anything you're doing on an airplane, you want to grab as close to the two contact points as you possibly can. And there is your completed wing frame. Next, let's move to the horizontal tail. So you have two sets of horizontal tail spars. Again, as before, break out only one set. Now the wood sizes on this part are much smaller because it's at the back. So its flight loads are lower. It's also a place that you don't want excess weight on your airplane. So it is, as a result, much more fragile. So take your time in removing your horizontal stab spars. Again, notches towards each other, and then we're going to pop out one set of ribs. We'll have some extra ribs in here. Now all of the ribs in your stab are the same size. It doesn't matter um, which one you use or anything like that. Now the stab ribs are in fact curved, so if you look at them end on, you can see there's a little bit of curvature here. They look almost flat. They're very slightly curved. We're going to repeat our procedure before that we did with the wing, where we glue in that center rib and kind of use it to line everything else up. And again, remember these parts are very fragile, so we want to take our time and be gentle on them. Now these stab ribs seem a little bit thick, so I'm gonna start pinching the ends on some of these.
And then lastly, glue in the chip ribs. You could glue in the chip ribs before gluing these in, but that's what I decided to do this time. And now, a horizontal tail frame. These components here form your covering frame. So these long sticks are 18 inches long, and if you look at one of your wings, it's not a whole lot shorter than that, so you don't have a lot of room to play with. You're going to want to glue these shorter sticks to the ends. Very important that you do that. And get this as square as you can. Again, little tricks like this you can use to make sure everything's squared up. because my piece of parchment paper is not quite big enough. All right, so this is what your covering frame is going to look like. All right, so take your petroleum jelly, and we're going to use a paper towel that we can rub petroleum jelly on this and put it on fairly thickly. I usually have a, a lot of excess. Now, with this done, your um, frame is slimy on one side, so you're going to want to set this aside in such a way that it's not going to get that all over anything. Okay, so let's take our covering out. And as I have mentioned, this is a veggie bag. So, you can use scissors or razor blade to cut the end off. You can 
additionally use some cutting instrument to make a slit of full length so that this now opens up into a big sheet of covering. Now we can kind of pull our covering frame into play here to get an idea how big of a piece we need. Cut this oversized though. Now, you've got a bunch of excess here, do not throw this away because you will use it again for your second airplane. Now, take this piece of covering, and right now you're thinking, I'm going to smooth this out. Instead, you're going to wad it up. I'm serious, you're going to wad it up like it's a ball of trash. Make it as small of a little ball as you possibly can. Unfold. Stretch it out. And then we're going to do the same thing again. This allows you to get a slightly wrinkled surface to the film. In terms of what the air sees, it's still going to see smooth film, but this allows the film to have a certain springiness to it so that it is easier to get the film to stretch out nice and tight on your airplane without being so tight that it distorts the flying surfaces. Now this veggie bag film is thick enough that it's not going to lay down perfectly flat. Sticky side down by the way. The sticky side has to stick to the covering. Now this film is not perfectly tight at this point. You can flip the film over. You can start to stretch it tight. It is more important for the film to be tight in this direction than it is this direction. We'll take out some of the slack here, but we're going to concentrate on that direction. Because that is what forces the film to adhere to your airfoil shape on your wings. And at this point, I would suggest At this point, I would suggest going around with razor blade and trim off some of the excess. Maybe. That just makes the film a little easier to maneuver. And be careful that you don't do what I did, which was to loosen the film back up in the process. And now we'll set the film carefully aside for now. Stand it upright 
or something so that it is not uh, up against anything. Okay, so we've got our uh, wing and stab frame and we have the 3M Super 77. You'll notice we're outdoors. This stuff you use outside, you don't use it inside because it sticks to everything. Now I'm going to set one of my flying surfaces down. And we want to spray, so if the wind is coming from that direction, we want to spray so that the film, the uh, spray is going to go back on this frame. So we're going to spray along the spars. We want to make sure we get a heavy coat on the spars and the tip ribs. And by heavy coat, I mean you can just see a, a little bit of a film on there. You don't want to just completely lather it up because that's useless weight. And then we'll just squirt a little on each of the intermediary ribs. And we're going to stick this up against a surface like that so it doesn't stick because if it falls over it's going to get stuck. Same with the stab, with the spars, tip ribs. And then light squirting on the intermediate ribs and you're good to go. Alright, so we're going to set our flying surfaces down on the table. And notice the sticky side is up. So if I touch it on this side it comes up with my hand and now I have to figure out how to get it off. If you notice I'm just kind of teasing this around because they'll stick to everything. I want to now take my covering that's on my frame ready to go and we're gonna lower this down now the covering is on is attached to this side so we're gonna lower it down so the bare side of the frame is up now when I lower this down I'm looking to make sure that I get everything inside the bounds of this frame so I've got a rib cleared here and here you notice they're very close together. Now at this point, everything's laying down. You don't try to lift it back up or you'll mess things up. You get one shot at this. Now at this point, things are relatively secured. So I would go around and just kind of touch the film down to a few high points like the ribs because those are the things that stick up the highest. Now at this point, we can go over and we can start to tick, stick it down to the spars. Kind of like this. So we're just tamping it down. This requires a little bit of patience. Take your time and you will get it beautifully right. Rush through it and you won't like the results. At this point, now that everything's kind of secured, I can start to rub my finger around here. Don't press down too hard or you'll break the ribs but I can press the film down on the spars and the ribs. Now I'm just on these ribs, you can see the rib flexes a little. I'm just putting enough weight on those ribs to get the film to touch it. I let the adhesive do the rest. I'm going to do the same thing on my stab. Now I'm going to use a razor blade to cut this out. This is where you absolutely must have the sharpest possible razor blade. So a brand new razor blade is essential. Now if you've only been using it for this build so far and haven't gotten any glue on it, you should still be able to use the same razor blade to cut out your film.
So there's your wing. Now I'm going to just show you using the cautery so that you see what that's like. Oops. And so that's the result using the cautery. Sometimes you'll have a little melted spot. You can tack any loose edges down. So if you have any edges sticking out like this, you're going to want to come back with a cautery or a razor blade. Just make sure those are melted into the wing. So you don't want any junk sticking out like that. Same thing with our wing. I was able to trim this very close, but if you have any excess, you're going to want to take some sort of sharp razor blade, cautery, or something, and not have any excess film hanging off the edges. All right, so we have our wing sitting here, and we're going to take our wing tips, which are the smaller parts. pop those out and then we'll pop out one of the larger ones, the rudder. Set the rudder aside for now. We're going to come back to it. So your wing tips go on like so, facing the same direction. So what we're going to do and this is why having your covering trimmed off close to the edge is important is we're going to put glue and it doesn't take much, just a little, th very thin bead of glue along here. If you feel like you're using not enough, you're probably using about the right amount. And now I'm going to face this, the front up against the leading edge, lay it flat straight down on the table, and gently press it in against the wing. Now it is important that the wing tip be facing straight up and down like this. The reason is if it's out it's going to add to your wingspan and you could get disqualified in competition by having too large of an airplane. Now we're going to repeat the same thing over on the other side and make sure you remember the orientation so that they're on the same way. So there is our wing all set. Next step is we're going to take our horizontal tail and we're going to take our tail boom. On the bottom of our stab, so covering is on the top, so on the bottom, in front of and behind the center rib, we're going to put a dab of glue on. Now, we want to center up the stab on here like so.
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our vertical tail and we're going to glue it on the left side of the fuselage of, of this tail boom right in front of the horizontal tail. And I've still got a little bit of CA accelerator so I can leverage that to have this go ahead and attach in there. And you can set a gauge to make sure it's straight up and down. Next, take your wing and find a set of wing posts and get your fuselage out. At the top of the fuselage, there's this little piece right here. I'm going to drop it out. Carefully break out our wing mounts. Take your time with this because you can damage these if you're not careful. Now you've got one that's labeled F and another one that's not labeled. The one that is labeled F goes at the front of your wing. So our goal, there is a little notch in the center of your wing that the top of this is going to notch into. Remember, this sweeps towards the back, so the front goes out here, like so. And so what we want to do is put glue on here, and we're going to face this end of that notch, and what we want is for it to be straight up and down like so, and we also want it to be straight up and down here. Now take the other wing mount, do the same thing with it, so again that piece is straight up and down this way, and straight up and down this way. Now the next thing you'll want to do is put glue right here on the front and inside that fork just up at the top now down at the bottom and you're going to take this piece and you want that wing mount all the way up against this notch. So we're going to slide it in exactly like that. Now we'll repeat that procedure at the back. And so now, as you can see... Okay, before we do anything further with this wing, we want to make absolutely certain that all of that glue is cured because we don't want this to stick to our fuselage. Go into your hardware bag and pull out two rubber bands and now pop open, pop out your fuselage now, if this is an electric fuselage, uh, the rubber fuselage is going to have the little uh, notch back here. But the important thing is this little part right here is on the top. This is the back of the fuselage. This is the front. And we're going to take two rubber bands, stick one there and one there. And then we will slide it over like that, and so the rubber bands fit in those notches 
like that. All right, you have a couple of options here that you're going to want to think about. So we have a complete um, wing assembly. It's not the wing is not the fuselage is not outfitted, but it's attached to the wing for now. And we have a complete tail assembly. Now, depending on the size of box that you are able to transport your airplane in, you need to decide whether or not you need a removable tail on your airplane. If not, we're going to, you would weigh this fuselage down, lay your tail boom on here, and just find stuff that you can jack the back of your tail up with to make sure that it's parallel with this notch. I'll find one more item to hold it up with. And you can glue it on like that. Now ideally, if you're going for left turns, you'll want one side higher than the other. So if you're going for left turns, you'll want this side jacked up higher than this one. And it's going to take a little trial and error to make sure that this tail boom is parallel to that platform. And then you can dab glue on there and you're good to go. That's not what we're going to do though. We're going to show you how to do a removable tail. To do the removable tail, we're going to open up our baggie and get out this piece of polyamide tubing, and we're going to cut it in half. Put half, one half back, the other half we're going to glue on here and we want it parallel in this direction. So if I glue this on here. What I can do then is hold this down to the table and press this down. Now what's going to happen is now it's going to be off to the side. That's okay. All I'm concerned is that this motor stick is parallel in this plane and that the tubing is pressed up against the fuselage. Now before proceeding further, we're going to put some CA accelerator on here so that that is locked in. Now the problem is that at the moment this can still break off easily. So we're going to make it so that it is basically the last thing on the airplane that could possibly break off by taking our spider wire and we'll put a dab of glue here. And we're going to just do about three or four wraps on here. We're going to harden this up with our CA glue. Trim off the excess. And there it is. Now, your thought is going to be, hey, okay, so I've got my tail boom. I can slide it in here. Let me explain to you why you can't. It's not going to stay because this is a larger diameter than this. And we supply this this way for a reason. One is this is a standardized size, but the other is this is hard. It has no give to it, so getting a friction fit in there is actually quite difficult to get it reliably. So. The solution is to come over here to your wing sheet or your wingtip sheet and cut a little strip of wood off. Now the accuracy of this strip is not particularly critical, but we've got a strip of wood here. We're going to take that strip of wood and we're going to glue it onto our tail boom. And it can stick out over the end a little bit, that's okay. And now, we have to harden this with CA Accelerator because we do not want any risk of it getting stuck in that boom. Now, if I pinch the end of this, 
and I'm squeezing pretty hard, I can get it to let me slide in here. Now in this case, this piece is actually a little bit loose. So what I'm gonna do is I could put another piece of wood on there to do that, um, or I can rub in a little bit of CA here. And then I'm gonna harden this CA as well. And now, so this gives us very firm adjustments and then we can slide it apart for storage. Um, if this ever loosens up, you can repeat that CAing process and, and tighten it back up. But this lets you get uh, very consistent results there. All right, for your zapper, you're going to go ahead and take your wing off. May actually be useful to take tail off at this time as well. Now slide the rubber bands. Actually, this rubber band, we're gonna stick it up. Just take it off. The other one we're gonna slide to the back. So take one of your power systems. Now there are several ways that you can attach this power system. The way that I am going to show you to attach it is using hot glue. Uh, you could use blenderm tape, you could use packing tape, there are a variety of things you could use. But like I said, I'm going to show you how to do it with hot glue. So what I'm going to do is right behind my charging jack, I'm going to put a dab of glue on here. And don't use as much as I did. Now, carefully holding this motor up here up front, I'm going to lower this down so there's just a little bit of slack in the wires, like you see there. And now my motor's attached down. Notice my capacitor is not. The reason that my uh, capacitor is not attached down is now it's away from the motor stick a little bit so I can slide my wing mount in here and adjust my center of gravity that way. Now, for your motor attachment, I find that if you have the motor parallel like this, the airplane tends to dive into the ground. So we're going to point the motor up very slightly just like that. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. So we're going to squirt a dab of glue on here, and we're going to lower the motor into that. And if you notice, I have inclined the motor up ever so slightly. Now, if you are using the other style of power system. You're going to do a similar installation on it. Let's see if we can get it out of here. Again, using great care. So you would go ahead and glue things down as per before. And then, sorry, these are magnetized. Then you're going to want to take this charging jack and you're going to want to hot glue it on in the down position, so the part that you plug into in the bottom, but you're gonna actually wanna hot glue that down. And the reason is this thing takes a little bit of force to pull in and out of the charger, and you don't wanna run the risk of breaking anything in the process. One thing I will also show while we're at it is on this airplane that does use that other power system, I have the components taped in place with uh, a, a special blenderm tape um, that uh, holds things very securely on there. Um, that allows me to remove this and transfer it to another aircraft should I choose. Now at this point we're going to get out some propellers because we want to determine whether this motor is turning one way or the other, and I actually don't know which way it's turning. So you have two different direction propellers. 
So I've got two different directions. The other two are as, as, as well. And so the flat back here and the part where the blades are curved in, that's the back of the propeller. The front is where they're curved rounded like this. That goes towards the front. So I'm gonna stick this on and I'm not gonna press it all the way. And very important, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna hold this with my fingers at the back of this motor, not pressing against the wires, just the casing of the motor, so that when I press this propeller on, I don't press the back plate of the motor out. These motors are very fragile and you will break the motor if you're not careful. So we're gonna just lightly press the propeller on, only a little bit, don't push it on all the way, or if you get it wrong, now you gotta figure out how to get that thing off of there. Now I'm gonna take my charger, and before I put my two AA batteries in here, this charger has an issue with it that we need to be careful about. These wires are not stabilized, so right here where the wires go in, I'm going to squirt a little bit of hot glue. There we go. Now, the polarity that these batteries go in here is very, very important, and you will destroy this capacitor if you put them in incorrectly. And warranty does not cover plugging these in backwards. So this one says the plus side goes over here. So like so. This one says the plus side goes down here. Now we can put this on. We're gonna put it in the off position. My switch, since this one uses the switch, is in the forward position so the motor's not going to come on when I start charging. So there is a slot on the front here that I line up so it only goes in one way, it will not go the other way. And you just gently press it in there and it locks in place. And now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to flip it back off. And now grabbing by the plug itself, I can pull it off and notice I pull up here, I'm not pulling, just yanking the charger off. And now, if I pull this switch to the back, I'm not feeling air, I'm feeling air out here. That means I need to use the other propeller. So, remember I didn't press this on very hard, so it easily is removed. I put my fingers against the back plate, and I, and I press the motor on just like that. And now if I pull the switch I can feel air blowing back against me which means I have the correct propeller. Now at this time take your little rubber band that you took off you can stretch it out across your fingers and gently stick it right back on. You can take your wing and drop it in place. Now what's very important is this wire you want to be on the outside from that wing mount. And now you have your wing in place and you can slide the wing up forward or you can slide the wing back to get it balanced correctly. And we can assemble our tail onto the airplane. And there we go. Now I have no idea which way this airplane is going to turn, uh, what trim inputs it's going to need, etc. Um, because it's brand new, but we do want the center of gravity to be right around the trailing edge of the wing maybe slightly forward to that, but that's a good place to put the CG. Now we're going to weigh the airplane and determine whether it needs ballast. So wait for my scale to initialize.
Come on. Stay on there. Don't fall off. It's going to fall off. Now it's stuck to me. We are at 10.3 grams, so we're about uh, 700 milligrams over the minimum weight, so we don't have to add any weight to the airplane. Um, and that just depends on the wood quality uh, and, and how much glue you use and so on. So with that, your zapper is finished and ready for flight trimming. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.